Hi friends, welcome back to Calm in the Chaos Homeschool. So today I'm going to share with you how our homeschool has gone so far. At the time of me filming this, we are starting week five of this homeschool year. If you want to know how things have gone, what changes I've made throughout these first four weeks of homeschool, stick around. If you're new here, my name is Davine and I homeschool four kids ages 10, 11, 12, and 14, currently in fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. Before I get into how our homeschool is going, I do need to mention that today's video is a collaboration hosted by myself and Shauna from Homegrown Homeschool. A bunch of moms are joining us in this collaboration and they will be making videos about how their beginning of the year homeschool is going. I will link the playlist in the description box below. So be sure to check that out when you're done watching this video if you're curious on how homeschool is going for other people as well. So we started our homeschool year mid-August, so roughly the third week of August. And I actually started a little tiny bit earlier because I wanted to have some time under my belt before things started getting crazy with things like speech and OT at the school, things like our parent partnership program where my kids have classes, things like dance and any other extracurricular things that my kids do. I just wanted to be able to get the ball rolling before all of that started. Now, where I live, we typically have a fair at that time. So often our first day of school is going to our local fair. This year, I started off a little bit before our fair because I also do have a eight-year-old girl who's joining us for our homeschool occasionally. She comes maybe once to three times a week and it's not always in the morning so it just depends on when she's here but she has been a lot of fun to add into our homeschool and she has really fit in really well with what we do. I'm going to talk a little bit more about all that in a bit. So I wanted to get started with my kids before we started adding this fifth occasional student to my homeschool and so we just got an early start. So when we started, we started with just group work. And I don't know if I've ever started the school year like that before, where I just started with group work and not independent work. I feel like in general, I will start with the independent work and then add in the group work. But I do think that it was a much smoother start, starting with our group work. So this is our fourth year of homeschooling, which seems like not a lot. I feel like I've been homeschooling forever but I definitely can feel like last year, I remember we had a really great first six weeks of school and then things started to kind of go down from there. So we had a really good start last year and we had a really good start this year. I wouldn't say overall as smoothly as last year. I just remember last year, those six weeks were like, wow, the best honeymoon period of homeschool that I've experienced so far. We are not quite as lucky this year but I'll talk all about that as we go along. So our first week, I would say we probably did three days kind of mixed in there. I think we went to the fair on Wednesday, so we might have done school Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. And all we did was group work and like morning basket. And I did build slow there as well. So the first day we probably just did some Bible, our World Watch news, which we have been really enjoying, and um, maybe one or two things from the morning basket. And then the next day, we just probably added a little more from the morning basket and then added maybe a language. And then the third day, we probably, I didn't write things down, so this is just how I'm guessing we did things. We probably added in like one of our group subjects by the third day and just slowly built from there. The second week of school, we did a four day week and that is when we started adding in some of the independent work. I say some of the independent work because I did do it very slowly and gradually. I just didn't give my kids their whole list on day one. We just gave them more, gave them more time to acclimate. We have a few new things that we're doing in our homeschool this year. So like three of my kids, math is brand new. 
So that took a little bit of finagling with the schedule. I did have my pre-schedule, the schedule that I was hoping to follow. I usually base it on the year before. I might change and tweak things as I'm trying to imagine our homeschool year. And I did change a few things around on that schedule initially, like I was thinking that maybe we would start our day with group time, morning basket and group work, and then move on to our independent subjects. I don't know if that lasted more than one or two days. And then I went back to our old method of doing about an hour of independent work before we start our group time. I don't know why I shifted that, but it just seems like a better fit for us. I think it also breaks up the independent work so that there's like an hour of independent work in the morning and then they do the group stuff and then they have time to do it in the after, after we finish our group time and it's not all lumped together and they just suddenly have this expectation of doing all their independent work as soon as we're done our group work. I think part of it is that. So week two was a lot of setting up my kids in their new math programs, any new curriculum that we did have, kind of going over it, explaining it to my kids. And that was pretty much week two. Week two, my middle daughter still didn't have her math like set up yet, so we weren't even starting her math yet. So just getting those three started on their math and explaining the new process and my expectations for that was probably the main part of that week. And I will say already um, some things have popped up with my child who we've just really have been struggling with as far as attitude when it comes to really anything that is requested. There is just always kickback and I think it's a lot of it is ADHD and it's like, what is it? It's demand avoidance something. And so we're just trying to figure out how to get around that and still get as much work as a child in this grade should probably be doing. So I think going into the third week, we had a three day week because I took Labor Day off and I took the day off after that. So if you've been around, you've heard that I take the first Monday and Tuesday of every month off of homeschool because there are things that I need to do monthly and I will get overwhelmed if I don't have two solid extra days that are normally homeschool days and I don't have any other extra expectations on those days off to be able to handle. So things like bills, things like working in my business, I'm making sure my businesses are still like up and running, just time to sit down and make appointments for kids, all sorts of things like that. I just felt like I really needed these two days a month. So it was the first two days of the month. And so I took off my two days. And so then we only had a three day week, which really helped with that one child who really struggles. As well as that, I also was looking at the stuff that I had for my younger two kids. And I was definitely evaluating what was the amount of work that they needed to do what was necessary, how little can I have them do, but still feel like they are doing what is necessary and required for me to feel good about their homeschooling. So this did require a lot of just deciding, okay, we're just not going to be able to complete a lot of this curriculum. Not that I always try to complete all of our curriculum, but even more of a step back than that, even more of a if we take two years to do most of this curriculum, I have to be okay with that because I do tend to double up a little bit on things. I don't like to drop things that are kind of working. So unless it's awful, if we haven't finished it at the end of the last school year, I will continue it in the new school year. But then with the parent partnership program, I do need to tell them something that we're doing. I could say that we're continuing on what we have, but for me, it's like, it's an opportunity to try something new and get something new. So then I tend to double up on some things. So I just needed to just be realistic on how much my two younger kids can actually do and just try to reduce some of the friction as much as possible. I will say the other child in this duo has been really, really improved in their ability to just take their checklist and just go down the list and get it checked off with minimal attitude issues. 
So that has been nice to see from one of my children, but I'm hoping that the other one will get to that point at some point as well. So that's sort of where we're at there as far as my younger two's independent work and just really just having to be realistic on what is going to be not possible, but not asking too much and just asking for trouble on my part. <laughs> so a lot of it is writing. It is hard for that one child to write. And so just making sure I'm breaking up the writing and not asking him to do too much of writing in a day or just alternating tasks and things like that. So then also at the same time, I was reconsidering what I had for my girls. I have shown you in the past my kind of my layout of how I'm planning out what my girls are doing on a weekly basis and then how I'm assigning them their work. I will make another video shortly on more specifics, showing the updated version of that, showing my boys independent work and maybe our schedule and what a day looks like or what our week generally looks like. I do plan on making that one soon. But at the same time as I was thinking about my boys, independent work and their checklist and what's realistic for them. I was also thinking about my girls and what I could realistically expect from them. I will say that I've been very proud of both of them and how they have stepped up and been able to accomplish what I've given them so far. I also will say that we don't have everything yet because with our parent partnership program, we don't always get our curriculum right away. In fact, when we started mid-August, really we can't expect our curriculum until the end of August because that is when our school system officially begins. And so that is when we get our curriculum at best. Sometimes curriculum is back ordered and they won't order it before like the middle of August. So sometimes we have to wait a while to get some of the curriculum that we wanted. So this is just the initial stuff that we had to start with. So I would say by week three, we were into this first week of September. So I did have a lot more of the stuff that I had ordered for both my boys and my girls. And so that was sort of when things were being added and I was looking at it and wondering if it was going to be a bit much. We are still missing a few things for my girls. So I did make some tweaks as far as how often certain subjects were done. I also wanted my girls to be working on some writing that they've done in the past while they're doing their EIW, which is writing and grammar. But the first section is grammar. So I figured, oh, I'll just have their, them do writing this term. And then next term when they're doing EIW writing, I'll add in things like my easy grammar, which I would like to continue. But I kind of decided that we're just not going to do that. We're not going to double up, even though we're technically doing grammar right now and not writing. I'm not going to have them continue on with the writing booklets that they were doing. So I cut that out. I spaced some things out a little bit more. I, for example, their science, when they're reading the world of chemistry or the world of physics, I cut some chapters into two chunks instead of just a chapter each, each time they did it. I also didn't start things like study skills because right now they're finishing up on some health that I wanted them to do. So I just decided that while they're doing that health, we're not going to add in a new health or we're not going to add in study skills that I was planning on doing with them at the beginning of the school year. And then there's also been a few changes about our guest hollow geography. So let's talk about guest hollows, world geography and cultures. If you've been here, you know that we started that last year. Uh, not a lot of it. I would say a term or two we spent on starting Guest Hollows, World Geography and Cultures. We got through the initial things about maps and teaching about terrain and weather and climate and that sort of geography. And then we did also Canada, the US and Mexico geography. And that's sort of how far we got maybe week eight. And then I was planning on picking up from where we left off, start in week nine, and just do it together as a family until I got to the point where we're in the Eastern Hemisphere. Because what I requested from our parent partnership program this year for geography was Bookshark F, which is 
geography and culture of the Eastern Hemisphere. And that was technically going to be our geography for this year. And I was going to have my girls do that. So Bookshark, a little bit Bookshark with us, a revised version, not a full version, and have them do the Guest Hollow Eastern Hemisphere portion to be their first credit for social studies. So like their geography credit for high school. And on top of that, I was still finishing off our beautiful feet geography, the Hauling Clancy Hauling geography. I only got to two of the four books. So there's four books total and we got to two of the books last year. And so that is what I started our year with. I started on the third book, but it is taking quite some time. It is definitely not one that I can double lessons up in. In fact, often if it asks me to read two chapters, we have a kind of short attention span in our house. So often I have to split each lesson into two, which really adds a lot of lessons. So initially I was planning on first doing the Hauling Clancy Hauling, the last two books. So that's about 20 lessons in itself, but then double that, I wouldn't say double that, maybe 30 lessons for us. So that's quite a long time. And then I was gonna pick up in Guest Hollows week nine, but Eastern Hemisphere doesn't start until, I don't know, week 15 or 16. So that is a lot of time where we're still doing stuff from last year and haven't actually started this year's stuff. So finally, I decided, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish this one book that we're doing of Hauling Clancy Hauling. going to stop that and save that last book for just end of the year or beginning of next year when we're waiting for our curriculum or something like just not be stressed out about actually finishing the whole thing. So we'll do that. And then we're going to jump straight in to Guest Hollows, the Eastern Hemisphere portion. So straight into Russia. So when you're mushing two curriculum together, you have to decide which one is going to be the one that you're going to follow the pattern of. And so I decided to follow Guest Hollows. So we're going to be doing Russia and then I'm going to find where we learn about Russia in the Bookshark or actually I have a sunlight guide that I'll be following, but I'm going to find that one. And I'm just going to, as we're doing Guest Hollows, geography and cultures, we're going to add in the read alouds and I'm going to have my kids do the readers from the Bookshark geography. And then I also had to decide Guest Hollow High School Geography, they have, they have an online textbook, they have a workbook, they have these additional books that are you frequently read like Material World, Hungry Planet, there's the Atlas, I'm looking over there because it's over there, People and Places, there's Where on Earth Atlas, so these other books that are also scheduled and then there's YouTube videos and then there's additional activities. And so I had to decide, am I going to just hand this all off to my girls to do by themselves as their credit, just say, okay, here's your high school credit. It just seemed like a lot for me to just hand them considering they're both in seventh and eighth grade at this point. And in addition to that, I kind of wanted to do that with my, some of it with my boys. So what I decided was I was going to hand over the online textbook and the workbook to my girls and I was going to keep the additional books to be what we do as a family when we do geography. So we will do the guest hollow, like the additional books as a family and then we will be reading the Bookshark readers. So the read alouds will be done as a family and my kids are all going to be doing readers based on their abilities. So my girls will be doing all the Bookshark readers and my boys, I basically went through and I picked half of them, the ones that I went and looked at the levels of reading and just assigning them the easier readers because my boys are younger than my girls. So yeah, so that's a lot, but that's kind of like what I've been struggling with as far as how to deal with this geography issue and how much to push it back. And I really don't like jumping around like that, but I think it's going to be the best case scenario for us this school year. So 
basically we still don't have our book shark geography that's one of the big curriculum sets that we don't have yet now that we've even finished week four and we're starting week five hopefully i will have that soon but i am still working on the paul and clancy hauling geography so it's not like we're in a rush but i did add the guest hollow textbook or spine and workbook to my girls for this week so this is our fifth week of school and they have added that onto their checklist. So things that I still need to add at some point is, like I said, once they finish their health readings that I have them reading, I'm going to want to do a study skills from Victus study skills system with them. I have that ready to go. And then maybe when we're done that, I might have them start on their high school health credit. And the other thing that we have not started yet is my daughter's Mandarin Chinese credit, her first credit for high school in language. Just seems like there's a lot going on right now. I am trying to figure out right now how to keep up on my girls' work because they are doing more independently. They have language arts, they have math, they have science, they have health, they have these things, and now they're gonna have geography. So how to keep up on checking in with them, as well as doing my teaching as I teach as a group, as well as looking over my son's shoulders. So they're a little easier because they do it out with me and I can just do a very quick glance and make sure they're getting the concept. I don't go through and mark their work per se, but the girls are doing a lot of work now in their bedroom. So I have to find time to gather all the stuff. There's so much stuff, it's a big pile of stuff and I have to have time to go through and mark it. And then I have to have time to go through and talk to them about anything that they need help with. So basically this year, we started a Monday meeting, Monday meeting with mom sort of time. So Mondays, three of my kids, the ones that need my help or need me looking over them when they're doing their math, they don't have math, they get to be off of math because we do a tiny bit of group time and then we go into the Monday meetings. So I meet with my sixth grader first. We make sure that everything from the new chart is scheduled into her planner. We go over anything that was wrong or things that I wanted to talk about from the last week's work and she can bring anything that she wants to work with me on. If there's something that's more challenging, she can bring it and work with me there. So maybe about 45 minutes with her. And then I have my Monday morning meeting with my eighth grader. Same thing, we go through the same process. So yeah, that is kind of what we're doing. So first week was a three day week. Second week was a four day week, it went okay. Third week was a five day week and that was rough. I would say starting Monday night with the particular child who started deciding that they didn't want to do stuff. Fourth week was our three day week. So that was last week. So it was a little bit better. It was a lot easier with just three days to get through. And then this week is going to be a five day week. So we'll see how that goes right off the bat, having struggles with that first child from even before school started. So yeah, we're, yeah, I don't know. There's trying to figure all that out. The attitudes are a little bit hard with all the kids going through their hormonal changes. <laughs> yeah, so the youngest one also is starting to be a little more challenging at times. But yeah, so really not a lot has changed since the last time we were homeschooling. A little more refreshed, I would say, for some of the kids. Okay, so health update. For those of you who have been around and know that in the summer, actually at the end of the homeschool year, um, I had like, I had a thyroid test and my thyroid was like really off. Basically hyperthyroid. My thyroid is going crazy. And then there's an autoimmune issue somewhere and just trying to figure all that out. I am seeing a naturopath and we have been able, like I did do my recent lab work, showed that there is definitely improvement. I'm definitely not in the normal range as far as like, I don't know if you're, if you have thyroid issues, you know, like T4, T3, reverse T3, all those are way like, ooh, really, really high. 
And so they, thankfully I got my report card, my lab report card, and they're coming down a little bit. They're not into the normal range at all, but I am feeling a lot better than I was at the end of last year. I think just knowing that there are issues, knowing that, so first of all, kind of understanding a little bit more why I was having a hard time with my emotions, with my self like control and things like that. Um, wasn't all just me, it was partially a medical issue. So I would love to, like if you are feeling like you are overreacting all the time, that's how I felt, I felt like I was overreacting. I felt like I was just like a mess. I was a mess at the end of last school year, I was a mess. And of course, coming into summer, it's just you have more time to rest, you're not homeschooling all the time. That definitely helps, but I think also just a few things that the naturopath has given me, some supplements, and just giving myself permission to rest and relax and to listen more to my body. I think having more time, yeah, I don't know. I think just prioritizing my rest and how I'm feeling so for example, yesterday was a Sunday and I do go out often on Sundays after I drop my kids off at youth group. I usually do delivery stuff and I was feeling really tired and I was feeling a little bit stressed because I had a video that I needed to get out the next day and I just like was logical and I said, okay, I'm not going to be able to go do the delivery driving, come home. The video was edited, but I needed to upload it and add the description and all that. And I'm like, I'm going to feel stressed doing that. It's going to be super late. I may be tired. The new school day starting. So I just gave myself permission to not go and do deliveries that night and basically just took my kids to youth group. And then I just sat in the office at the church and got my YouTube stuff done. And generally, I would just have made that work. In the past, I would have just said, okay, well, this is the night. This is when I go do deliveries. It's like my schedule, I need to go do it and then I'll just figure it out and I'll still get everything up on time but I'll just not sleep as much and that's sort of how I would have done things in the past and at this point I just have to be like, it's okay. If for some reason I cannot get a video up when I would like to, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. I like to be consistent on here but I know you guys would understand if I wasn't able to do a video a week for some reason and I just need to listen to my body when I'm tired and not just keep pushing myself. So I think just having, having been what diagnosed or whatever, or figuring out that there's something happening, that there's stress causing issues with my body, that we have a lot of, there's just some serious health issues in my family. So it's really important that I do take care of my health and I pay attention to my stress and I try to relax and rest when my body is telling me that I need to. So all in all, I am drinking lemon balm tea. It's been amazing. It calms my nerves, my anxiety. I am napping when I feel like I need to nap. I am not going to work when I am just needing a break. And especially with adding homeschool on after the summer and just trying to figure out the homeschool stuff. It's kind of like, I just need to, I did not expect this video to be like this. I just need to give our needs to God, both physically, mentally, and like financially, because that is still a strain for us. I just need to trust God and listen to listen to the body that he's given me and and let myself rest when my body is saying that it needs rest. So anyways, did not, did not plan for this video to go this way. So that's how I'm doing health-wise, improving and just trying to be good to myself and trying to rest when my body says I need rest. And I am definitely, overall, I'm feeling a lot more calm a lot better able to deal with the challenges that are coming my way, especially on the kid front. Um, yeah, it has been a 
my emotions, my mood, my stability has been better this year, which of course affects my homeschool as well. So it's important to keep that, take care of yourself because if you do not take care of yourself, you're not going to be able to take care of your family. And that's pretty much what I'm learning right now. So that is my update. That is how homeschool is going. Yeah, that was a very long video. Thank you for sticking around. If you are still here, thank you for joining in the collaboration. If you're watching this video from our collaboration, don't forget to check the playlist below for all the other moms sharing how their homeschool year is starting. I can't wait to see all their videos. Yeah, thanks for coming guys. And I hope to see you in my next video. Bye everyone.